Chapter 7, Commands Set 3, Laying Out Your Drawing for Printing. Learning objectives for this chapter are to understand the difference between model space and paper space, creating viewports on your layouts to see your model space objects, changing the size and location of the viewports on your layout, setting and locking the scale of the viewport, setting up and plotting from paper space, renaming, adding, and deleting layout tabs. So as we start to work with model space and paper space, model space, also called M space, is this infinite drawing board and we draw things full size in model space. And we can toggle the model space button. We can toggle it right here with model. And then we can go back to the floor plan and I believe we can also put a model paper space button on in the customization, but I'm not exactly sure where that is. And so I'll come back to that at a different point. But as we, oh, there it is. So here, here's our model and here's our paper. And so as we start to work with this, here's our model tab where we see the user coordinate system showing the X and Y axis as we draw and work in model space, everything is drawn at full scale. When we work in paper space, we'll see this right triangle icon. And that's ideally because paper space is meant to be the size of the paper. So for example, on this drawing right here from chapter five, using the B size architectural title block, it's an actual 11 inch high by 17 inch wide B size sheet of paper. And so when you work with the title block, you can actually have the text heights and you can scale them regular size. So you can set up quarter inch high text and it will print quarter inch high. Versus when you're working in a viewport, everything is scaled. And so if you're working with text in a viewport, things get bigger or smaller depending on the viewport scale. You can make viewports different shapes. You can use the rectangular shape or you can use polygon shapes. So for example, if I wanted to create a viewport, what I would do is I would double click, make sure that I'm in paper space. And then I go to the show the menu bar, view, viewports, and then you can create a viewport. And so if you just say one viewport, you can go and create a viewport like that. And you can double click in that viewport. And then you can see everything that's in model space there. You can double click out of it. You can resize that viewport. You can click on that viewport, right click on it, and you can set properties for that viewport. So for example, if you had a 3D model that was in there, you could have it set up so that it would always be printed with conceptual. But since this is 2D, I can't really show that at this time. I can delete that viewport just like I can a rectangle. If I wanted to create a polygon shape viewport, what I could do would be to draw a polygon shape. And so I can draw a polygon shape like that. And then I can say view, viewport, object. And I, I somehow didn't quite get that one right. Let me try that again. And I think it wants me to create that from the viewport command itself. And then I can see for close yeah and now it's working properly the other way that i'll create viewports is in paper space i'll draw a circle and then i'll convert it to a viewport by saying object and then what's nice is that you can go through and you can set the scale and the detail that you want for that viewport and so i can come in here and i can say eighth inch equals a foot to set that viewport scale. So
So as we work with viewports, we can have these drawings that will show different objects. So if we had a chair in a table, you can go and set what you want to see in those viewports based on what's in the drawing. And then once you have what you want set, you can go in and set the scale for that. And like I was just showing in the other drawing, you can create these viewports by saying view, viewport. And then if I wanted to put four viewports, it would create four viewports like that of my conference room. We can set the scale in the viewports as I've shown. You can adjust them with grips. And then you can access model space while in the layout. In other words, it's called a floating model space. And so a lot of times people will actually do that where they'll be able to have a viewport set up in a drawing and then they'll work within the viewport. And that's a really good technique because we can also use viewport layering to do that. And so what we're talking about is just basically double clicking in the viewport and then being able to do work on the drawing itself at this point. And then for example, if I wanted to demonstrate viewport layering, what I could do is I could draw um, a dimension in here. And it helps if I have it on a different color so you can actually see that. And so if I were to put in a dimension here, And another thing when you do work with viewport layouts, what works really well is to go into the dimension style DDIM. And you can create a dimension style that works within that viewport. And so I could come in here and I'll just go with the standard and just say new or modify. And then I can say on the fit tail scale dimensions to layout and then I can set my text height for the plotted text height so I could set that up at uh, 3 16 so let's say we'll say okay and I'll also set that for architectural units and okay it And then if I wanted to use that architectural style or a standard, I could set that as current. And I can put in a dimension. And it'll set my dimension scale for that viewport. Um, I have to come back to that at another point. I was just trying to show some technique for that. So as I said, you can set the scale for the viewport for the conference room. We can go through and adjust that, set that up. And then once we have that viewport set and scaled, we can then go through and plot from paper space. And so when we plot from paper space, essentially we're plotting the layout. And so what I can do is if I go to my conference room and I want to plot this, and let's clean it up a little bit. Let's get rid of these two viewports. And the viewport scale is set at a quarter of an inch equals a foot. And then I double click outside of the viewport and I go to paper space and I can go to file plot and then I can dial in my plotter. AutoCAD is tied to your plotter so I have this brother MFC plotter that I can print to that'll take B size paper but a lot of people will use AutoCAD to PDF and so I can set it up as a PDF and then I can set it out at layout and you leave it at full scale and you can preview it. And then it will set up and print that at full scale, which will then 
allow the viewport that set it quarter of an inch equals a foot to be read with an architectural scale. I can right click and say plot, name the plotter, and then the PDF is generated. So it's tied to the printer. You can you can print when you print in paper space to the layout. You can dial in the paper, the printer, paper size, the orientation. You can choose the printer and the sizes of the paper. So as we go through and, and we start to look at printing and plotting, if you're printing in paper space, essentially you'll just print it to the layout. And so if I come over here and I say plot, and I say OK, if I wanted to print it on a paper printer, I can go to my brother printer. It will only give me the paper sizes that I have available. And so I do have 11 by 17 available. I can plot it to the layout. You want to leave it set at one to one, and then you can preview it. And you'll get that preview. You can right click and select exit. You can change things if you wanted to. You could go and print a window. And then what you would have to do would be to actually select the window of what you wanted to print preview it, and then it will just give you that part of the window. You could center it, preview it. You could set that up at a scale, but ideally when you print in paper space, you go with layout and you leave it at one to one. And then we can talk a little bit about plot styles a little bit later on as we go through. When we print from model space, essentially we can print this drawing in much the same way. So you can dial in your printer, you can set your paper size. And so let's say I have a D size print. I want to print this to a PDF. And then I can I can say extents, center of the plot. Get rid of fit to paper, and then you can choose the scale. Preview it. And then I'll print it a quarter of an inch equals a foot from model space. It's the old way of doing it. All right. So that's a quick rundown on printing and plotting. As we look at layout tabs, layout tabs are like in Excel where you can have these tabs that you can go and rename. And so for example, in my drawing, I have a layout tab called floor plan. And if I wanted to rename that, I can right click on it and I can say rename. And then I can say OCC floor plan plan enter and so you can rename it just by right clicking on it and selecting rename you can delete it you can move it or copy it so if you needed an extra copy of it you say move or copy and you can say move to end create a copy and you can say okay and now I have a second elevation tab and then I can go and rename that if I wanted to something else. It's our move and copy. And then, you know, for example, if you forgot to put a title block on there or something like that, 
um, I can come back in and I can download a title block. And so these are B, but I could still download them. And so I could say download. And let's see where it's going to go. It goes into my downloads. And then while I'm in my drawing, if I forgot to have one, let's say I said file new. And I just use a basic AutoCAD template. And I needed a template for the layout because by default we'll just get these two tabs for layout one and layout two. I can right click on it and I can say from template and then I can locate that in my downloads. Open that. It'll give me the layout tabs that I want. You can rename them. And now I have my elevation layout. I could have clicked and had additional layouts added to it as well. And so that's just what I did. I went through and I added a template. All right, so that completes this chapter seven, information on layouts and printing and plot.